Mm-hmm. All right. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, this is Frankie Slauson, and welcome to the Frankie Slauson Show, the last big guest of uh, of the season I have with me today. And I don't know how familiar you guys are with uh, his work, but uh, you might you might be familiar with the name. His name is Zolar Glenn, and uh, he's uh, well. He he does a lot of stuff on like uh, I what did you say like Battle Cam and Stick Cam when Stick Cam was around. A lot of the uh, a lot of these social media networks or whatever when it came to like blog TV and everything. Are you there, Frankie? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did I lose I, it? I'm waiting for you to give me my cue to talk, but uh, oh, okay. Uh, you're, sa- you're saving the best for last, in other words. Huh? Yeah, pretty much, I guess. <laughs> I was just trying to give you a nice, proper introduction, anyway. All right, it was odd because I didn't see the time to come in. You were just like going on and on, and I was waiting for you to finish. But okay, here we are. Yeah, here, and you're there. How yeah. are you? I'm doing all right. I'm I'm in Minnesota, and you're in New York, right? Yes, I am. And. uh so, you know, how how did you get started in the in the world of uh, broadcasting and stuff? Well, it's funny because like it was a natural progression. I was on a lot of New York based radio shows that were syndicated, um, like Ron and Fez. I don't know if you ever heard of those guys. I don't think I have. Uh, and then there was uh, um, a couple of other uh, big shows like. Um, I, I don't remember these guys. Um, the names of him, Mike, and something or another. Okay. Do you know who, who I'm talking about? I'm, I'm not. You know, you're probably talking stuff that would maybe be on satellite radio right now or something. I'm not too well, sure. Yeah, yeah, but these were on terrestrial radio back then. But I mean, uh, you know, these guys, these guys uh, had me on, and um, you know, I was a caller, and then they brought me down to the studio. But most of all, I was basically doing the Stern show. I was calling into Howard Stern oh, okay. a lot. It's different characters all the time. Okay. Yeah. And one time I uh, called in as the character Zolar, and it was about the guy Riley, Riley Martin was uh, abducted by aliens, and Howard was doing an interview. I called in as like you know the uh, captain of the mothership, and I named it Zolar. <laughs> And that's yeah. kind of where the name kind of came from, I suppose. Yeah, right? yeah. So it kind of stuck, you know. Like, uh, you know, they say, "I remember that guy. That's the guy who did the voice of Zolar when Riley was on." And every time, you know, they would catch me, you know, every now and again, and say, "I know who you are. You're Zolar. You're Zolar." So, after the years of calling in and them catching me, you know, doing my characters or whatever it was, um, they would just be like, you know, calling me Zolar. So that's how I got the name. Oh, that's cool. And um, what happened there, uh, you know, when I realized that I can, uh, you know, do my own type of show, whether it be audible or visual, uh, you know, the internet was like the next choice. It was I was pioneering back about ten years ago when I found out uh, from um, from um, a kid, he was like, "Hey, you can actually do your stuff on the internet, and people will listen to you, and you can use Shoutcast." And he like hit me to. The uh, whole internet uh, broadcasting thing, the the webcast, per se, and uh, his name is Major Chaos now, but back then he was Prank Master. Oh yeah. And, and uh, he was like, I like when you do your pranks and you do this, and we could call up people and I'll get numbers, and you know, he kind of like you know, he kind of like pushed me into doing a prank call show, and uh, that's how it basically evolved. Oh wow, yeah, I, I remember. I, I I know Major Chaos. He he once in a while comes on the Raj Fox Fox cast, but uh, very seldomly though. Not as much as he used to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's busy. He works. He does his own thing, and uh, you know, he he wanted to become a big thing on the internet, and never really took off. And um, you know, it doesn't happen for everybody. And it's, uh, you know, he's he's a nice guy though. He did help me a lot with all of my uh, you know beginnings and throughout and stuff like that. He was a technical advisor, and uh, he searched out phone numbers, and he did a lot of stuff. He, he was fun, and, and he was also a lot of fodder for the show. I used to pick on him a lot. <laughs> He's a giant of a person. Oh yeah, yeah. And did, did you guys like meet meet in person a lot of times, or did this all just happen over the internet? Well, no, no. Originally, we started off meeting uh, early on because he would come over and um, you know hook up my uh, my uh, audio equipment to the computer and stuff. So he was he was very involved personally throughout the whole thing. Yeah. Oh wow. Well, that's cool. No, that's that's kind of a good way to to start because it's like who knew you know that you'd. Uh, 
you know, involved, you know, because of somebody you met on the internet. Yeah, yeah, some kid, you know. Yeah, I mean, he just, like, kid. contacted me out of nowhere and was telling me how I do this and that. And uh, he, he introduced me to a bunch of people who were already doing it. And uh, they let me do it on their shoutcast stream. It, it, was, it was all fun. And uh, this is, like, ten years later still fooling around with this crap. And it's it's so much it's it's funny because you know there's been so many throughout the last few years especially there's been so many different platforms of where you can broadcast from and, and now most now part of those pro, uh, flat, uh, platforms are actually not around no more. Blog TV's gone, stick cam's gone, and now we're on like you now or uh, what's that other one? Vaughn TV and Battle Cam now. And what do you oh, think yeah, about all yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. I heard of the uh, you know sites that are closing down, and I used to broadcast on Stickum, and um, I, I you know like I, I would I was originally uh, you know on all of the channels, like I, I went around to see which one worked best for me, and uh, uh. you know I like the format of uh, Stickum. I don't know why it left and everything, but yeah, I've been hanging out at uh, Battle Cam um, for the last at least two and a half years now. Okay, yeah, I didn't know how long that site was uh, running for, but I guess. Uh uh, Ray uh, Petty, aka Raj Fox, he uh, he started going there after uh, Blog TV closed down. So, yeah, well, that that was a, a little bit later on into the Battle Cam years or whatever. It's only been open for like three years or whatever. Okay. But, um, yeah, it, when when he came along, it, it's like people were trying not to let you be on camera. So no matter how good you were, or interesting. They would like what they call over there, poop you off. But they're voting. The audience votes for who they'd like to see, and yeah. there's two people on screen at the same time. And if you're good, they just want to they just want to crap on you and stuff. So that's the whole. It's like an anti-social social network over there at Battle Camp. <laughs> yeah, they and uh, I've seen the show a little bit. And, uh, they they uh, they don't give you that much time to to really. Uh, they give you a little bit of time to vote, but they don't give that much time uh, screen time though. I mean, as far as uh, for the next person to go on. Yeah, well, each person, uh, you know, gets to be on screen simultaneously with their uh, competitor, and within the minute that they're on, the voting is decided, uh, you know, throughout the, uh, the audience. And whoever's got the most votes, uh, you know, nearest the end of that minute, uh, you know, gets to stay on, and the next contestant comes in. And depending on how much, uh, you know, like, popularity you have, you could stay on for, you know, umpteen minutes at a time. I, I, I've been known to stay on for a really long time, and there's others that can do it as well. And then at times people just, uh, you know, hand you your head and poop you off every time and never even give you a full minute. It yeah. just, you know, depends on how the wind blows. <laughs> I guess so. I suppose it just depends on how, how damn entertaining you could be. Yeah, well, you know, like I said, even if you are entertaining, you know, like, they'll poop you off just to uh, yeah. laugh, you know what I mean? Like, right in the middle of uh, you doing something stupendous. Like, there was one time, I have to tell you, there was one guy, I mean, people do the silliest stuff over there, but uh, a, a guy literally, like, showed a knife, and he put it up to his arm like he was going to stick it through his arm. Yeah. And, like, the audience voted him off. You know, like, it wouldn't, I mean, I know it's not the, it's not the coolest thing to everybody, but I mean, if you see somebody do that, you can, he, he's not going to do it. How do you vote that off? I don't you know, know. I mean? so The guy came back around the lineup maybe six minutes later with the knife through his arm, and it was not a special effects thing. He had to go to the hospital. We saw him with stitches the next day, everything. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, yeah. So we missed it because the audience is so stubborn that they won't let anybody do anything. <laughs> so uh, how how do you make money off that site? Because I see a lot of people that are make some money. How does that work? Well, there's an eccentric billionaire that owns it. His name is Alki, A-L-K-I, and the last name David, like the first name here on any other David that you know. Yeah. Um, Alki David uh, is a billionaire, and um, he gives it away basically like there's certain times throughout the day if you're on camera for a minute for every minute that you're on camera you're getting a dollar so if you stayed on for 60 minutes you've made 60 dollars an hour <laughs> you know and then there's other times when uh, he'll come on and uh, challenge somebody to do something outrageous for whatever fee it is you know yeah. what i mean it, it, again it's uh, whichever way the wind blows it could be a hundred dollars it could be a uh, hundred and thirty thousand dollars i see them give away everything from a hundred dollars to a hundred and thirty thousand dollars to one person he's throwing his money away pretty much huh? <laughs> i don't know if he's throwing it away i mean he's got uh, a lot of money and i would say even if this site turned out to be 
a fail if he's keeping track of the cash that goes out you write that off as a tax uh, deduction I guess and then it's a, it all comes good when I mean, you're working in the billions of dollars uh, you know losing a million here and there doesn't matter so I mean you'll, you'll pretty much have money the rest of your life anyway pretty much you can totally go bankrupt <laughs> Uh, yeah, I doubt that'll ever happen. The interest alone that he accumulates on his uh, uh, different accounts and whatnot is, is uh, more money than four or five of us can live off of. Uh, yeah. Gen- so, like, uh, out of all the social platforms that there have been that you've uh, traded away, what, what's your personal favorite? Well, as it stands, uh, you know, Battlecam has been the most successful for me monetarily. Uh, I've been able to uh, accumulate quite a few. Uh, uh, dollars out of that place uh, i like the people there i've gotten along with uh you know people more at that site than any other but uh stick him had uh, a really really big traffic base so i was able to pull in way way more people uh on stick him than i've ever had listen or view my show actually because my show is uh you know video as well as audible yeah and uh what type of uh show do you do for people who have never heard of you well, uh, basically, I mean, uh, normally people would be label it as a prank call show, okay. but um, uh, throughout the show, I take calls from um, viewers. I take calls, uh, you know, from uh, random people that are watching on television and going on because that's another uh, facet of the uh, Battle Cam Alki David site, casting East Coast live on uh, public airwaves on television. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's, yes. what, that's what yeah, Roger's so, saying. Yeah. yeah, so I field call from individuals and topics fly, you know, to whatever it is that they want to talk about, whether they need peace or, or they just want to hear, uh, you know, what's going on in my mind when they tell me something. There's a lot of uh, um, aspects of the show aside from the prank calls, but uh, mainly uh, you could label it as like a, a prank call show comedy type show. Okay. Yeah, well, that's that's cool. I mean, it's uh, how, like in comparison to the Raj Fox Fox cast, if you're going to compare the two. Well, which is, uh, I don't know, does Runch mainly do prank calls? I mean, oh, I not, know not as much. I guess not as much more. I guess I, I mean, I, I already kind of know what he does, but I'm just saying for people who, who've never heard of the guy, I guess, or who have, uh, yeah, he does prank calls once in a while. It depends on how many people are in his in his room. See, yeah, he doesn't see, have that's as many. The thing. Yeah. I, basically, like, uh, throughout the show, I'll take numbers that are submitted from the fans, and uh, they'll give me a scenario, like, uh, here, call my brother. Uh, you know, he got arrested last week, and you can make believe, you know, whatever, you're going to be his probation officer, whatever it might be, you know, like that. So throughout the show, we take random requests from the audience. Yeah. And uh, Ronch is, uh, is a really funny guy, you know. Uh, he's more vaudeville than I am. I'm more, I'm more of, um, you know, like stoner host and like, oh, yeah, let's pontificate. And, uh, you know, he has a lot of one-liners and he's very, very uh, witty with his retort where uh, I'm just crude and uh, vulgar and more juvenile. He's, he's, uh, he, he's more collegiate than I am. Yeah, and he pretty much says what's ever on his mind. He doesn't even give a shit about who he offends or whatever. Cause <laughs> right, right, right. But what I'm trying to say is he's got a, a vaudeville uh, persona. Like, yeah. He'll be like, hey, how you doing? It's Raj Fox, and if you don't like it, then dig yourself a hole, and you can be in the foxhole. Yeah. <laughs> You know, where sure. I'm just like this the entire time when I'm oh, talking okay. to you is what you get on my show. It's more like me and you are sitting around smoking pot. Oh, okay. Okay. Hey, you need that too sometimes, you know. <laughs> 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 I mean, in a way, sometimes, more or less. Uh, but no, uh, I mean, that's, that's cool. And, and the thing is, it's like, uh, uh, you have you ever had like any radio experience prior to your being online? Uh, were you a broadcaster before? No, no, no. I mean, I went to the Connecticut School of Broadcasting. I learned engineering, and of course, I had taken singing lessons as a youth. And um, um, just other than calling into like the Howard Stern show, and Howard had let me uh, co-host a Sirius Satellite Radio show at one time, but no real professional uh, okay. radio background. No. But how do you think that kind of has changed with the internet and everything? Because now everybody can be a broadcaster from their home and and do kind of the stuff that you do or, or do what anybody else does on, on the social platforms. Yeah, that, that makes it that makes it fun for everybody. And I've always thought that, you know, uh, it's nice to have the option to find out who it is you're in tune with. 
I wouldn't deny or begrudge anybody for uh, being on and letting people hear what they have to say because, uh, you know, one man's trash talk is another man's, you know, hearty har har. <laughs> yeah, that's that's for sure. Uh, but like, uh, like with your prank calls, like, what's the most uh, funniest prank call that you can remember that you've ever done? Ooh, well, some of my <laughs> pranks are really vicious, though. Oh, you know? okay. Like, again, what I think is funny, somebody might find appalling. Like, oh. I had called up these racists. Uh, they were, uh, you know, like uh, members of the KKK. Oh, and they geez. were at some kind of rally. And they, we, well, one of my listeners or uh, viewers had found out the hotel and uh, the room number that they were staying. So I called up as... Um, the uh, the concierge of the hotel and um, told them that there would be complimentary food sent to their room and uh, you know all they have to do is sign for it and um, you know enjoy the party and we're glad to have them in the hotel and this and that so anyway they got billed uh, for champagne and all kinds of uh, <laughs> ethnic foods I sent them everything that maybe uh, some of the people that they hate the most like watermelon and fried chicken and things of that nature. <laughs> Collard greens got all sent to their room, and the bill was quite extraordinary, and I got quite the chuckle of it. Oh, jeez. <laughs> hard feelings, right? No looking back. <laughs> Racist bastards. <laughs> I ain't never coming to this place again. <laughs> wow. That's well, that's... I thought you said it was complimentary. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I can, I can just imagine their reaction, boy. Sir, you've never spoken with anybody in our hotel. Yes, I spoke with Mr. Zolar. He said it was all complimentary because he don't like the naggers. <laughs> Jeez. Wow. So, so uh, I, I remember you did, uh, well, I'm sure you, you've done a lot of pranks with uh, Ron Fox before, but there was, a, there was one that I've ever seen on YouTube. I don't remember... I don't remember like what you guys were talking about, but I remember seeing you guys together. I think maybe it was for a Fox cast or something like that, but you guys were together, and you did like a, a, a prank together. you believe it? It happens in this world of the internet. It makes everybody all over the world seem as if they're just in reach, just like you <laughs> reached out to me, and yeah. we've had this moment together. Oh, yeah. That's such, uh, such a great time, you know. And, and I appreciate the fact that uh, you uh, agreed to come on the show because my show is basically just a simple thing. It's a it's a variety show. I'm, it's nothing special, but it's just something that I, I take passion about. And I, I do interviews with uh, different type of celebrities and anybody that's in the pop culture world. And, and plus, I make videos on my own YouTube channel. I probably have like over 500 different videos that I've done. And I just thought, well, it'd be kind of nice because of my radio background to bring back the... Uh, the uh, the interviews that I used to do on the radio when I was actually on radio and do them on YouTube and do them at, at my house and I don't get paid for any of this stuff. This is all just free, but it's just because I've had a passion for for all this. So that's why I want to have you on. Philanthropist at heart. Very <laughs> nice. Very nice. I'm glad you did have me on. So make sure that you put uh, a notation on the screen where people can click and find my YouTube page. Right now you should be seeing it flash across your screen if you're listening. And uh, thanks again to, uh, for just taking the time to, to talk because you are my last guest for this season before I start my summer interviews. So, <laughs> As I said in the beginning of the interview, saving the best for last. Take care and thanks for having me, Frankie. Hey, no problem. You take care, my friend. Bye-bye. There we go. And that was Zolar Glenn, or a.k.a. Glenn Zolar. Uh a fellow, uh, well, a fellow YouTuber, as it turns out, and a fellow guy who's done stuff on Stickcam and Battlecam and any of these social platforms that you've heard of uh, way back when. I'll put down all, all his information to his Facebook and everything uh, so you can check it out if you want or subscribe to him on YouTube or find him on Facebook and or, and find his show and stuff. I think it's uh, very cool. Now, the interview that uh, I announced here a while ago about uh, who who I'm going to be getting on uh, Stickam here, or not Stickam, but on my YouTube show, was supposed to end the uh, the uh, summer, or end the uh, the season of interviews or whatever, before I start my summer interviews, but his his interview is still going to be happening, in fact, possibly by the time that I, this interview goes up, uh, that his interview has already been done, but I'm not going to say who yet, because uh, if you follow me on Facebook, you know who I'm talking about, but I'm not going to say it on YouTube here yet, until I know that I've done the interview, and if I've done the interview, I will let you know. But it'll be for it'll be aired in the summertime, as uh, in June. 
But I uh, hope you guys enjoy the, enjoyed this uh, season of interviews. Uh, 42 interviews I've accomplished. That's a big uh, big number with a ver- variety of people that uh, have been in the pop culture world. And I just want to say thank you to everybody who has le- left feedback. And, and I'll talk more about this in my next video that I make because I'm going to make a couple videos now before we end the season and before summertime comes and, and talking a little bit about it and also asking the question once again uh, now that uh, the season is o- or over as far as uh, the big interviews until summertime again. Uh, who was your favorite guest for this season? Because we might uh, get try to ask try to ask the ones who have uh, try to ask the ones. Uh, uh, hold on here. <laughs> you just, you know. Anyway, uh, try to ask the people who uh, uh, who have came back or who have been on the show before. There's a few that I might ask to come back to do like a video show on Skype, so, uh, uh, depending on, uh, which favorites are, are, or which personal favorite guest was your favorite, that may take a major, uh, role in, uh, who comes back this summer, uh, cause I might ask a couple people to come back if they're interested. So, anyway, I'm Frank Slauson, and thanks for tuning in for these interviews, and, uh, there's still plenty more to come. Oh, we ain't, we ain't done by a long shot. We're just getting started. We're just getting warmed up. We're just... Warming up the pot of coffee for a long, big cup of coffee that you're going to drink. And by that time you get John drink, drinking that cup, cup of coffee, you, you'll you probably be so high off caffeine you don't know what to do. <laughs> anyway, Frank Slauson, and uh, we'll uh, see you again. Tyrell. And Tyrell. <laughs> Snooch to the nooch. <laughs> what it is. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye. <laughs>